So the latest technologies we're trying to incorporate into the surgery suite are the likes of different ways of making capsular orexis. So the manual technique works pretty well, but it's not as repeatable as the likes of Zepto or Capture Laser. For me personally, I really like the idea of Capture Laser. In the clinic, what we have been using, which has worked incredibly well and very interestingly, is a device called Vivior. And Vivior is a device that a patient wears on their spectacles um, for 36 hours minimum, but for long, as long as what they like, to collect data. And it collects working distance, it collects the ambient light, and it collects the head position, up and down, left and right, and tilt. So when the patient comes to see you, you have a personal defocus curve, and you know exactly what the patient's needs are. And when the patient knows what their needs are, they drive the discussion, and they will tell you, I need a premium lens. They've seen their data. And so it makes the discussion a lot, a lot more easy. The doctor's not trying to push a technology, the patient's asking which technology is best. And then with this objective data, you can then match the technology available and see which defocus curve fits best. So that's really changed the way we manage uh, premium patients. And in fact, any presbyopic patient. My premium presbyopic correcting lens uptake was about four or five percent in general. And we're seeing using Vivio that approximately 70 to 75% of patients choose a premium technology. And the moment the patient knows what problem is being solved, they're far more likely to accept any of the, the associated dysphotopsy or so forth. So that's really made a difference. And other than that, I'm looking forward to some of the, the newer ways of marking the cornea and having the whole digital pathway from, from diagnostic to microscope. We haven't incorporated them yet, but that's what we're looking forward to. So if we look at different countries across Europe and across the world in terms of technology adoption, I do see differences. There are places where adoption is much more readily. And from my perspective, it seems as though if there is remuneration involved, that people are more likely to adopt technologies faster. And if they aren't, then they tend to be slower. So in the mind of the surgeon, you're continuously looking at what the potential benefit is versus the potential issues around the technology. So in Ireland, we don't have, there's no remuneration for premium lenses. So our USP in the clinic, our number one on the mission statement is patient satisfaction is a top priority. And I believe we don't have the right as surgeons to say, I don't do multifocal, so you can't have a multifocal. I mean, if I don't do it, I can refer you to someone who does. So I believe that everything should be available to everyone. So in Ireland, it's only about patient satisfaction. And since we've been using Vivio and the patient wants something to resolve that issue, we see patient satisfaction going up. Based on where you are, you're going to have a different approach. The other thing that makes a very big difference with premium technologies is whether you have a refractive uh, solution for patients who don't achieve target. So you have to have some sort of refractive strategy to take care of patients with laser or something else, or adjustable lenses. The pitfalls I would see with current technology is when they're used without thinking about the patient's needs. I think the assessment is really important to try and get an idea of exactly what the patient's needs are. And when you understand the needs well, and even more importantly, once the patient understands the problem you're solving for them, you're more inclined not to run into trouble. So we've had a very long experience with monovision. And at this point in time, people think we, we might be taking the long route to continuously do monovision trials but we do them to make sure that it's going to work out for the patient. And in fact, for refractive lens exchange, I routinely do a multifocal contact lens trial, even though you won't get the same multifocal in an IOL, but at least you get the idea of whether the, the patient can adapt to multifocal technology. So, I mean, assessing the patient's needs is paramount. If you, if you use any of the technologies as good as they are, without ensuring the patient's a good candidate, you may run into trouble.